My goodness, it is so good to be here with all of you. Um, I'm going to be very brief, but I want to introduce our next guest, who's playing a pivotal role in expanding STEM ecosystems beyond the community of practice assembled here. Mr. Louis Lopez is the director of DOD STEM with the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, for real. Louis was 11 when he moved to California from the Philippines and stayed with relatives until over the course of the next 20 years, his three siblings and eventually his parents finally made it to settle in the United States. His parents were accomplished educators and STEMists and they clearly imparted this passion to Louis. At first, he didn't actually want to be an educator, but it wasn't until his junior year at UC San Diego that a community service experience with Reed San Diego changed his thinking. This model program, which is still around, provides free literary instruction to adults to help them attain their GEDs and other professional certifications to advance their careers. Louis saw firsthand the vital impact that access to education has on learners of all ages. He continued his career at Cal State Fullerton with a position that exposed him to rural student population of immigrants, farm workers, and locals from the agricultural community of the Central Valley, many first in their family college-going students. This experience deepened his commitment to expanding education and opportunities to underserved, under-resourced, and underrepresented populations. Of course, another critical factor in Louis's career trajectory is his time in a variety of roles at the Department of Defense. Please look at his bio in the app. It's amazing what he's done at the DOD. Together, these lived experiences inform Louis's STEM worldview. For context, the DOD is the largest employer of civilian scientists in the federal government and has been a prolific incubator and accelerator of STEM innovation for decades in numerous public-private partnerships. As director of DOD STEM, one of his many responsibilities is the Defense STEM Education Consortium, also known as DSEC, which is a sort of a DOD-curated STEM ecosystem comprised of dozens of diverse stakeholders from all sectors working to deepen STEM, teaching and learning, and create connections to military-connected families, underrepresented populations, and the many DOD STEM outreach initiatives and opportunities. Ties is honored to be a member of DSEC. Louis is the ideal person to be the bridge between DOD STEM and STEM ecosystems. He's a passionate educator, deeply values both in and out of school learning through the full continuum of cradle to career. He understands the mission-critical task of making opportunities available to all with a focus on underserved, under-resourced. He's committed to connecting all of this rich teaching and learning to the workforce pipeline because our national and economic security relies upon it. He is the very model of people, planet, and prosperity. Please help me welcome Mr. Louis Lopez. Well, thank you so much, uh, Julie, for that almost embarrassing uh, introduction. <laughs> um, we did say a couple of sentences, but I think she just went over a little bit. Um, but great to be here with all of you uh, today and the next couple of days. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Jan and the Thai's leadership. And, and uh, we also have an SAC acronym in, in DOD. Actually, we have a lot of acronyms, uh, STEM Advisory Council. Um, that great talk that uh, Reginald uh, just uh, provided earlier. I know that my colleagues and I are excited uh, to be here with all of you. 
and look forward to the discussions over the next couple of days. It is a great privilege and honor that I've been asked uh, to provide opening remarks um, today to this great community of passionate STEM learning ecosystem leaders. This is actually my first uh, convening. I hope to tell you a little bit about DOD STEM, our partnership with organizations like RTI International, BEST, National Math and Science Initiative, Society for Science and the Public, and of course, TIES under the Defense STEM Education Consortium, just to name a few, and how important STEM ecosystems are to our mission. I understand, and I believe Jan alluded to this earlier, that this week's agenda has been developed in response to your inputs across the STEM ecosystem community of practice. I think that's phenomenal. A vested community will almost always yield fruitful results. This new federal holiday, as um, Reginald uh, talked to you earlier, to honor one of the final acts of emancipation of enslaved people in the United States signifies the commitment of our nation to the work of equity, equality, and justice. Yet, much needs to be done today. The Department of Defense is steadfast in this commitment. DOD STEM, DOD STEM's vision is to create a diverse and sustainable STEM talent pool through educational opportunities for students and teachers of all ages throughout the country and across all demographics. This includes our goal to increase participation of underserved and underrepresented groups. And for us, that includes the military connected students, our veterans, and their spouses in STEM programs across the K through 20 education continuum. Overall, the DOD is committed to ensuring that our nation have enduring access to a diverse and agile technical talent ready to meet our national defense and national security challenges of today and tomorrow. For DOD STEM, whether that talent ends up in our defense research laboratories or engineering centers, or in industry or in academia, we count that as a win for our nation. Perhaps some of you here today might not be aware that the Department of Defense has a comprehensive investment when it comes to STEM education, outreach, and workforce development. Our military departments in the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps, Air Force, and now Space Force, as well as our defense agencies like the Missile Defense Agency, National Security Agency, Defense Threat Reduction Agency, just to name a few, all engage in STEM activities at the local, regional, and national levels. As Julie had alluded to, uh, in the Department of Defense, we have nearly 300,000 STEM professionals with about 60,000 working in our defense research laboratories and engineering centers. We are the largest employer of federal scientists and engineers. And that is why we are committed to ensuring that we contribute to the development of the future technical workforce. Now, in order to maintain the nation's uh, competitive advantage and support the growing STEM workforce that the nation and the DOD relies on, we need to work collaboratively with all stakeholders that have equity in this mission. This is why we value what you all do with your STEM learning ecosystems and with TIE's leadership. DOD STEM supports department-wide efforts that address near to midterm STEM workforce needs and long-term STEM talent development through a variety of educational and work experiential opportunities. Some of these activities include opportunities for students, whether that's through summer STEM camps, competitions, internships, and they all are paid internships, apprenticeships, as well as scholarships, as well as for teachers through online resources, professional development, fellowships, and more. All of these opportunities could be found on our website, and I'm putting a plug in right now, dodstem.us. The Department of Defense cannot afford to operate this mission in a vacuum. DOD STEM partners with nonprofit organizations, industry, government, uh, local and, uh, and state educational agencies who share this very same uh, mission. In fact, we recently uh, revamped our DOD STEM strategic plan and our first goal specifically calls this out. Inspire community engagement in DOD STEM education programs 
and activities to provide meaningful STEM learning opportunities for students and educators. We are thrilled to be here, as I said, and learn about how we can further develop these relationships and support them in a STEM learning ecosystem model. We believe that cross-sector collaboration between formal and informal STEM education, as well as business and industry and STEM-rich institutions is happening organically in select pockets in the US. And where it is happening, systemic changes are realized at both the student and community level. This is why DOD STEM has invested in the Defense STEM Education Consortium. Launched in 2019 and led by RTI International, uh, DSEC is a collaborative partnership that aligns the Department of Defense STEM strategic plan and the Federal STEM Education Strategic Plan, seeking to inspire and develop the next generation of scientists and engineers through a coordinated and cohesive approach. We, we are investing uh, approximately 89 million over five years in DSEC, aimed at broadening STEM literacy and developing a diverse and agile workforce. There are currently three hubs, um, there are currently three hubs in DSEC located in San Diego, California, Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area, and of course, uh, Dayton, Ohio area, or do STEM. The regional hub approach emphasizes targeted place-based programming and outreach activities in regions with high concentration of DOD research installations. We want our, our scientists and engineers in our workforce to engage in these activities and ties has been instrumental in promoting organizations and activities in all three of these hubs to cultivate a robust STEM ecosystem within each region. In addition to DSEC, DOD STEM is continuously working on expanding our reach through regional ecosystem. For example, recently we put out a notice of funding opportunity announcement aimed at creating regional consortia to specifically support STEM education at community colleges. The overarching vision and mission of this effort is to incentivize new or existing STEM ecosystem between local stakeholders and specific regions with two goals in mind. We want to increase the matriculation of students, especially underserved and underrepresented populations, from two-year institutions to four-year colleges pursuing STEM. But we also want to encourage uh, students uh, these populations at the two-year institutions to pursue degrees and certifications in certain STEM technical fields of strategic importance uh, to the department. Other ecosystem models in the department includes the department, if you haven't heard of this, the department's manufacturing technology program, which oversees the DOD manufacturing innovation institutes. These institutes form a network of public-private partnerships organized around a set of technologies key to U.S. manufacturing competitiveness. The Department of the Air Force National K-12 STEM, led by uh, their director, Ms. Elise Lorbach, and she's here at this uh, convening, so please ensure to reach out to her, is also looking at how to frame their national efforts through regional ecosystems approach. Also recently, as part of a congressional report requirement, the Department of Defense worked with Stevens Institute of Technology to look at how the Department of Defense and the defense industrial base and, and uh, companies can work more collaboratively in developing the nation's technical talent. One of the report's recommendation is for the department to look at a system of systems approach or a system of regional sy ecosystems approach to frame the national wide effort. Sound familiar? In closing, there is an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Yes, there will be struggles along the way. Yes, it may also seem progress is moving at snail's pace. And yes, there are some inherent challenges to an ecosystem approach, such as measuring its effectiveness, resourcing, but the benefit in working together far outweigh these challenges.